Hey, welcome back. Our next lesson is on constructing squares and points of concurrencies. Now, I know for many of you, this will be a new word, but that's okay. We'll talk about what that means in this video. This lesson will cover three CCRSM standards. The first is to use the tools that we learned about last lesson to construct a square. The second is to construct a line parallel to a given line through a point not on the line, which to me is very similar to constructing a square. And the third is to construct the inscribed and circumscribed circles of a triangle. These first two standards will largely do during class when we have compasses in front of us. This video will focus mostly on this last standard. And again, I know that most of you don't know what inscribed and circumscribed means, but we'll talk about that in this video. All right, let's get started. As always, you should have your student materials in front of you. And this lesson begins with an opening exercise that we will again do when we have a compass in front of us. But it asks you to construct the perpendicular bisectors of the three sides of the triangle below. Now to review very quickly how to construct the perpendicular bisector. So for this segment right here, you'd put the pointy end on this endpoint, have your compass go more than half and draw an arc. I'm just sketching it here. And then put the pointy end on this one without changing the compass size. You then make the same arc and then connect the two dots and you have a perpendicular bisector. Now, if you do that for all three sides, something interesting happens. And to show that to you, I have made this triangle, which looks like the other one, using a web app called GeoGebra, which I love. And with this web app, I can, with one click, create the perpendicular bisector of this segment. So that is the perpendicular bisector of that line. And the perpendicular bisector of this line is there. And finally, the perpendicular bisector of this line is there. Now, something really interesting happens that all three lines, all three perpendicular bisectors intersect at the exact same point. And the word that we use is they are concurrent. So when three or more lines intersect at the exact same point, we say those lines are concurrent, and the point where they intersect is called the point of concurrency. So that actually goes into your notes. If I scroll down here, when three or more lines intersect at a single point, they are concurrent. And the point of intersection is the point of concurrency. Now, the question that I'm hoping you're asking yourself is why would the perpendicular bisectors be concurrent? Why wouldn't they intersect in different places? What is it about the perpendicular bisector that would make them concurrent? So take a second and answer the question of why you think the perpendicular bisector might be concurrent. Ready, set, go. Thank you. The reason why the perpendicular bisectors are concurrent has to do with the nature of the perpendicular bisector. So let me review quickly that for this perpendicular bisector, every point on that line is the same distance away from the two endpoints. So this point, for example, this length and this length, these line segments have the exact same length and this segment and this segment have the exact same length. That every point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the two endpoints. Now, the point that I care the most about is the point of concurrency. So keep in mind that this distance and this distance will be the exact same distance. Similarly, for this perpendicular bisector, every point on that bisector is equidistant from those two endpoints, which means this distance 
and this distance must be the exact same distance. And since this one is marked with one tick mark, I will also use one tick mark for this segment as well. Now notice that now all three segments have one tick mark and they must all be congruent. And just to emphasize that, the same thing is true for this perpendicular bisector, that all points on that perpendicular bisector must be the same distance away from the two endpoints, which means these two would have to be the same length. Okay, so the reason why the perpendicular bisectors are concurrent is because at that point, it is the same distance away from all three points. Now, that point, because it's the same distance away from all three endpoints, has some special properties. If you think about that as the center of the circle, center of a circle, and this length is the radius of the circle, then the circle actually will include all three endpoints of the triangle. Let me show that to you. So here I've made a circle that has a center at this point of concurrency going through one of the points, but it will stay on all three points as I move this triangle around. As I move this around, notice that the triangle fits perfectly inside the circle. In other words, the triangle is inscribed um, in this circle. Okay, now the name of this point that's created, created by the perpendicular bisectors is the circumcenter. And let me show you where that goes in your notes. The point of concurrency of the three perpendicular bisectors is the circumcenter. And let me explain the meaning of that word. There are two parts. The first is circum, which means circle, and center, meaning center. So that is the center of the um, of the circle that fits um, the triangle perfectly inside of it. And so that's why it's called the circumcenter. Next, we'll look at the angle bisectors. And just to, again, to remind you that the way we construct that is by drawing an arc through the angle we want to bisect. And then from the pointy end at this intersection, we draw an arc. And from this intersection, without changing the compass, draw the exact same arc. And then we have bisected the angle. Now again, I have made a triangle in GeoGebra so that with one click I can, whoops, I can create the angle bisector. So there's that angle bisector. Here is this angle bisector. And then the last angle bisector is here. Now by this point, it won't surprise you that they are concurrent but all three angle bisectors will intersect at the exact same point. Please take a second and think about why you think the three angle bisectors will be concurrent. Ready, set, go. Thank you. The reason why the angle bisectors are concurrent has to do with the nature of the angle bisector. Keep in mind that for this angle bisector, every point on this bisector is the same distance away from the two sides. And we always measure distance away from an, a line by using the perpendicular distance. And so this point, these are the same length, and these are the exact same distance. Now the point that I care the most about is at the point of concurrency. So that means because this is on the angle bisector, that this distance is the exact same as this distance. Now for this angle, again, because this point is on that angle bisector, that this distance right here will be the same as this distance, which is already marked with one tick mark. And so all three of these have the exact same length. So this angle as well, just to make sure that you get this, um, because this point is on this angle bisector, these two will have the same distance, which is already marked by the one tick mark. 
Okay, so again, this point of concurrency also has some special properties because all three of these distances away from the lines are the same. In fact, if you drew a circle with that as the radius, it would fit perfectly inside the circle. Let me show you that. Then I can move around this circle and that move around the triangle and that circle will always stay inside um, the triangle. And the center of that circle is this point right here. Now this point has a special name. The name of this point is the in center. Okay, and I will show you where to write that in your notes. Scrolling down here, so looking at this below, um, point A down here is the circumcenter, and point B down there is the incenter. And it's called the incenter not because of the circle, but because this point will always be inside the triangle. So let me show you that in GeoGebra. If I move this around, that point will stay inside the circle. So it's called the in center. Now, there are other points of concurrencies, other interesting facts um, about triangles. But this lesson is focusing on the circumcenter and the in center. The circumcenter is formed by the perpendicular bisectors, and the in center is formed by the angle bisectors. The circumcenter is the center of the circle outside the triangle while the in-center is the center of the circle that's inside the triangle. Again, this video was focusing a lot on points of concurrencies, and we'll take some time in class to talk about constructing a square and constructing lines that are parallel to a given line through a point not on the line. Thank you so much for watching.